Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys had a great weekend. As you all know, I enjoyed my weekend. I want to give another birthday shout out to my girl Sharon. We spent Friday and Saturday together just, you know, having cocktails and everything. And I went to the new Cheesecake Factory that's here in Philadelphia. And the food was good. I think my only complaint about the Cheesecake Factory is that there is too much to pick from. It has to be like maybe 200 and something options to pick from to eat and knowing me I'm gonna have everything so I just I just had the uh, the waitress help me pick my stuff and the, the food was good, the drinks was good, the environment like it's so nice they had an outdoor patio and everything. If you get a chance and you live in Philly go to the Cheesecake Factory it's right at 15th and Walnut it's right next to the Verizon store. You go up the escalator and you inside. It's very nice in there. Have you been there yet? Well, you as you know, I recommend y'all to go because the food's fucking good. Um, please make sure y'all start this video off by clicking that thumbs up button. Also, make sure that you share this video on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever you share videos. If you see it posted on Facebook, share the post. If you go to the Scorpion Show Facebook page, share the post. Also, on September 5th, and we are maybe like six weeks away, probably five weeks away, from The Scorpion Show and Sweet Addiction TV presenting The Blackout, which is Saturday, September the 5th. It starts from 3 to 8. It will be at The Crow's, Net, the Crow's Nest. Um, not only will Mikel and I and Candy will be there, we have much love from Kentucky, Forest Rocks, Messy Miles, Bondi Blue, your boy New New. Miss PTV, A Connection TV, and soon to be added back to the list will be Justin J. So shout out to you, Justin J. Um, you know, I'm just really, really excited because we are getting closer and closer to September 5th, and I haven't been to Atlanta since last year, so y'all know that's my favorite city. I can't wait to be back. Um, if you have not donated to the blackout and you would like to the link is inside the more info box right now we are just short of thirty five hundred dollars so thank you to everyone who has donated and also look at that my neck is hurt what is wrong like i can feel the hair growing back already yeah. mm. well you'll be all right well y'all as y'all know um on thursday mikel and i were invited to tony braxton's concert which feature Babyface and also Mint Condition. Now, even though they say the show starts at 7, right? I'm thinking this show ain't going to start at no goddamn 7 o'clock. Come to find out, Mint Condition was on stage at 7 o'clock. And we didn't get there till about 8 o'clock. So we missed most of Mint Condition's show. Like, they went well over 8 o'clock. Then like a 20-minute intermission. And then Babyface was on stage. Babyface did a great job not just with his songs I mean Bobby Brown not Bobby Brown what's his name Babyface yes he was doing all the, he was doing all the songs he wrote and at first I'm like come on now um come on now Babyface I know you wrote a lot of songs we know you wrote for damn near the entire music industry but like I was I was getting a little mad because I'm just like come on I want you to go back to your songs but he went to all the classes that he wrote he was still singing I had went to go get me something y'all know me and um, when I came back, he was still a couple songs not finished, and then he finished, and then it was another intermission while Tony's band came up. But first of all, before we talk about that, can we talk about when you are going to a concert and you get your ticket, your ticket tells you where you are supposed to be sitting. Whether I'm an hour late, two hours late, do not sit in my seat. And then get an attitude when I come and say, hey, this is my seat. You're sitting in my seat. Like, you don't got your purse all out. You got your drink sitting there. You got your food in your lap. Okay, well, it's time for you to get up because I'm back at my seat. And then I got my life. I got my life because the same thing happened to Mikel. And I, Mikel was a couple rows ahead of me. So I'm looking. I was ready to pull my phone out. But this old, was there two ladies, a couple or whatever? Well, it was two ladies, but... They were sitting in our seats because there was a guy sitting in there. 
<laughs> and when I came and I realized they were MIC, I had no idea that I didn't even know that they were even supposed to be there. Because you don't know. Mm -hmm. You just think maybe they're sitting there because they see is an extra seat, whatever. So the lady's like, um, you know, I made it very clear this is our two seats, me and Jeremy, this is our seat. So they was like, oh, okay, you know, we're sorry, you know, but he's in our seat. And when I look over, he's like this. Ooh. Like, <laughs> he's not a move. <laughs> So naturally, I have nothing to do with him. Okay. Because those are their seats. I just need y'all to get up out of our seats. <laughs> you deal with him on your time, but y'all need to get up out of our seats. I don't have nothing to do with him. So what you tell me, you're not going to move until he gets out of your seat? Mm. No, you're going to move now. Yes. So. Right now. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, this is going to be a kick. Cause I, but they took their time getting up. Because I was standing up looking for a while. And you know, yeah, they did. <laughs> and, you, and your nephew Jeremy told us to no, Mikhail, don't do that. Don't no, do no, what? No. This is our uh, seats. seats. And they had not stay in the room only. Right. <laughs> don't do that. You know what? You go in the back and somebody yeah. else will come How up. How about here you? Yeah, tell yeah. him to come up. <laughs> so you know some don't do that. <laughs> no, he's an RC. And I said, excuse me, sir, like, come on, you gotta move up the process. He wasn't even supposed to be sitting mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, you're not, I don't pay, them people pay good money to sit out there, and you're not going to let nobody just bogart your seat like No! That. Hell no. <laughs> and then if I'm standing here, and then our whole, se we were in the front row, so the whole section behind us is looking like, well, what's going on? So the one lady looking at me like, that's right, that's right, <laughs> yes, that's right, get up! <laughs> the fuck? Why should I have to say it more than once? It's okay. Get up. <laughs> it did take us Damn. a while, I mean, because them people, them people... You know, it's a that's a that, that's the age of a certain crowd. So yeah. they were on time, yes. and child, they was you ready to go to try it. What? That? What? Child, it got to be clean. It got to be clean. Oh God! I'm looking at my stuff. It's nothing in there. It just got to be. Oh, clean. you can take it out. Yes. Oh, you. See, this is, note to everybody, if you ever invite me to your house, I am one of those people that observes. Yes. <laughs> Even when you think I'm not looking. <laughs> okay? So be careful when you invite me to your house, because I'm in there like this. Mm -mm -mm. So Tony, so Tony Braxton, she was horrible. She but finally she came horrible. out. Horrible. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't think Tony Braxton Listen. is horrible. All right, let me just say it like this. Shout out to Tawanda for giving us our tickets. We really thank you and appreciate it. But you know what? This is my thing. Kevin was sitting not a few rows behind me. He was sitting a whole section behind oh, me. Bitch. Let's keep it clear. Okay, okay 26 okay. seats behind. Okay? That's a whole section. <laughs> anyway, and my section was different from Kevin's section. As a matter of fact, I don't think it was that different from Kevin's section. I think Kevin is just like acting like he does not... No, because I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to let truth. you finish. So Tony Baxton comes out on stage, okay, when it's finally time for her to come out. She comes out on stage, and she's performing. Now, naturally, I'm sitting there, and I'm getting in, and I'm getting in, and all of a sudden, I'm like, something's not right, but I'm not saying it out loud. I'm saying it to myself. I'm like, damn, something is not right. Then before I know it, Kevin's niece, because by this time, she came up there, because she loves Tony Braxton, so she came up there, and Jeremy went in the back with Kevin. So she comes up there, and all of a sudden, I hear his niece go, wait, is she even singing? So I'm like, <laughs> so then I hear people sit behind us like, she's not even singing. <laughs> now, now, okay, <laughs> okay, now, Kevin says that it, it didn't seem like she was lip syncing to him. But for some odd reason to the rest of us in my section, we yes. got in that she was lip syncing. The first, I think it was like the first two songs she was listening mm -hmm. to. And the reason why we say that is because, you know, we all know Tony Braxton. She's very, mm -hmm. you know, that's Tony Braxton. But at some points when she was singing, it was like, you know, she would go like this. And then the track would start playing and she'd have to hurry up and move her mouth back to the microphone. It's like, hold up. <laughs> Sing it. Because I'm like, and then Mikkel texts me. And, and I'm, I'm like, texting him like, Kevin, she's I'm not like, Her lips are singing. moving to the screen. Now yeah. she didn't sound like she's listening. But I will say this. Yeah. When Tony asked, can y'all hear me? And then she sounded louder. And I said, right. okay. Now, now maybe you sound that's right. And then the crowd... <laughs> 
My drunk ass in the crowd was like, yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, but, but, it was shade. but it was shade. The crowd was saying, yes, we hear you now. Yeah. But when you're singing, we don't hear you. We hear the track. And we want to hear you. Now, hey. look. Now, mind you, before the show, before the show, Tawanda <laughs> told me that, Kevin, because I'm going to tell you all the story of what happened. So, Tawanda texted me during Babyface set and was like, Tony, when Tony performs another sad love song, she pulls people up on stage. Mm -hmm. So just be in the area so Tony can, you know, get you up there. So we all, like, at this point, like, I'm just enjoying the show. And then when I hear another sad love song comes on, the spirit lifts me up out my seat. Because I told, I told the guard, she was like, anybody that go down there, she was like, we don't care. She was like, if they go near the stage, as long as they don't go up the stage, we don't care. Who said that? The, um, the guard that, okay. that was in my ear. So I said, okay. So the spirit lifts me up, and I go down to where the stage is at. As soon as I start walking near the stage, security was like, hell, see, no. now listen. But you know what's so funny? The reason why I said, because you were like, you know, come up because Tawanda told you to come up. Uh, At first I didn't believe you. I thought you were lying. But then I realized that you were telling the truth. But the reason why I didn't come up, because we had a vantage point of the stage and we had a vantage point of the guards. And see, the guard that was in your section that told you that it was okay that you go up was totally different from the guards that were at the stage, there, okay? Mm -hmm. The guards that were at the stage were men with suits okay. and all that. The guard that you went had the Dell security. <laughs> <laughs> So I knew that those guards at the stage <laughs> they with the black were suits were not playing. Okay. 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 So I said, Amber, I'm not going up there with him. I'm going to let him go up there. And whatever happens, happens. I was like, come on, man. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. I'm going to talk to him like, come on, just let me go up. And he's like, so, no. So Tawanda is looking at me and she's laughing and then Trina talking. Yeah. She's doing all of this. And I'm like, yeah. hey. And, and then, I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, laughing at me. Bring me the fuck <laughs> up there. Yeah, man. Yeah. So Tony's like, come on, let him up, let him up. Then she's like, be nice, be nice. She was telling the guards to be nice. So then, so then I go up there and Tony's like, so what is your name? And I said, Tony. So she was like, what is your name? And I said, Tony. Because I'm thinking like, Tony, are you asking me what, am I, what is my name? So I said, oh, Tony, you don't know me. Oh, you don't know me, Tony. So then the song just really goes in. So by that time, I just gently had the mic and I started singing and all of a sudden, I was expecting the crowd to boo me, but the crowd got their light. They got excited because you were the only one up there saying it. So and so then when y'all when y'all when when y'all when y'all seen it on Instagram, bitch, you not gonna try. It. So when y'all seen the mic on Instagram, I was like, oh y'all can hear me now, right? Yeah. Y'all can hear it now, and right? I said, yes, we hear you. <laughs> Cause I was over it. Cause because I heard the people saying that she wasn't singing loud. And I don't like that because Tony Braxton is one of those things when you ain't never, never got you ain't yeah. never hear about her lip syncing. Well. So that's why I had a problem and I was like, but well, this mic is on. <laughs> this mic is definitely on. Yeah. And I just enjoyed myself. And after the show, you know, I, I know people notice us and stuff. And people's like, oh my God. Were you supposed to be a part of the show? I was like, no, I wasn't a part of the damn show. I just was to go up there and everything. And listen, listen, Kevin's sugarcoating it. People were walking out on Tony Branson's set. Yes. Let's just be honest, they were. They were walking out on the set because once Tony realized that the crowd wasn't into it, it became real awkward for her. And she was trying to get the crowd to be into her performance. She even came off the stage and was singing to people, sitting on people's lap. But it was very awkward. And people started to get irritated and annoyed. And they started to leave. And at one point, we noticed hundreds of people leaving at once. And then Kevin turned around and was like, oh my God, look at all those people leaving. Yes, because now it's gotten to the point where you're like, look, this is awkward. It's not going the way it should be going. Babyface came out and he killed it, he killed it, he killed it, he was amazing. Everybody's waiting for Tony Braxton, she comes out and it's just like, are you serious? And so, when she, Kevin wasn't the only person that she pulled on stage, she pulled other people from the audience that they didn't, know the they didn't even know the songs. And I'm just like, look, this is starting to get a little too much. People were genuinely upset, why? Because they paid their money to see her perform, and it just wasn't going the way that they saw. Yeah, if anything, Tony, me and you can sit down and we're going to get your set list together. Okay, yeah. Because it's tough to perform <laughs> these new songs right. and they're proud to get in it, and they don't know no, it. Exactly. They, they don't they, know They're it. familiar with your old... 
classics. Now, this is what I will say, because I had a conversation. I, I went to my pastor's house um, yesterday after church, me, him, and his wife, we were talking. And so we just got onto the, the, um, the subject of the concert, and I was telling him. And, you know, everybody knows that Tony Braxton is suffering, you know, has lupus. We all know that. And she even mentioned it, you know, at the Dell. Mm -hmm. But this is my thing. I think that that cannot continue to be... Uh, 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 an excuse for Tony Braxton when she's performing, especially when people pay to see you. Because yes, we all know that you have lupus, but everybody's not going to hear that when they pay their money to come see you and perform. My thing is, if if the lupus is going to now naturally, Tony Braxton can't, you know, she can't tell you when it's going to flare up for her. She doesn't know. We get it. But I think at some point it's time for her to say, you know what? I need to sit back and just stop doing this until I am fully under control with this situation because I don't know up too much about lupus. I don't know how far along people have it. I, I don't know anything about it. But I just feel as though if you're going to perform, Tony, you need to be conscious that people are going to get upset with you if you do what you did the other night here in Philly because it was horrible. And then you talked about, you know, I'm just being honest, it was horrible. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was horrible. I don't think it was yeah, horrible. It was very horrible. Anytime she pulls you and other people on stage, that's horrible. I thought that Tawanda wanted you to come on stage because they knew you. Got it. But when she started pulling other people on stage beside you, I'm like, yeah, because she's trying to get this crowd participation together and nobody's into it. Like, how do you pull people on stage and they don't even know the words to your song? Because mm -hmm. they're trying to out their head. Bitch. You were the only one she put on stage that knew the word to the song, okay? And it's like, I, I just need for her to rethink. I know she talked about how, you know, Babyface, she was going to retire and Babyface told her no, but I think maybe, you know, sometimes you got to do what you have to do, especially when your health is involved. Because like I said, if I'm digging in my pocket to pull out some coin to pay to come see you, damn it, I want to see a show and I don't want to hear any excuses as to why it is that you can't perform after I didn't give you my hard -on earned money. Because see, what's going to happen is you're going to get on stage and you're going to say a few songs and you're going to be like, oh my God, I feel so tired, I feel so sick, you know, blah, blah, blah. and you, what's going to happen is you're going to walk off stage at the end of the um, concert, you're going to walk off stage with my money. <laughs> And I don't want you to do that. <clears throat> but you know what, though? Don't I do think, that. I think if they didn't have mint condition, I know it didn't have anything to do with Tony, but right. it also was getting late. I agree. I think that mint condition should have had like maybe 20, 30 minutes. Because ain't nobody going to stay in there that long. I didn't get home till like 12. But it was probably over like a little bit at the 11. You got these people saying for four hours. When we went to uh, the show in Atlantic City, I, you didn't go to that mm -hmm. one. It was Babyface and Tony, and it was over in a great amount of time, mm -hmm. where everybody could go gambling and everything. And it was that show was definitely better than this show, but Babyface was better here than what he was in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. But it was just for me, I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed the whole show for me, and plus at the getting on that stage, I was on a fucking high. Now everybody want to know who who are you, such 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 such. When I came back to my area, but Sharon was telling me that, because Sharon went with me and my, and my niece Amber, she was telling me that at first they thought you was just joking when you said that you was about to go up on stage and everything. They was like, and then they was talking shit when you left. And then while I was up on stage, everybody wanted to know who I was and what was my email contact. And Sharon was like, get out of here. Y'all so fake and everything. Because now, now that he up there, y'all all, all want to know who he is. But... I just had, I just, I really enjoyed myself. Why she didn't give me your email contact? Huh? I don't know, because she was like, he was Joe. Like, he was being too Joe, and he was just, she was like, the whole time, he was just not feeling you like that now, well, all of a sudden. Well, we've been having that for the past seven years, Sharon. We got a lot of jokes. She, she's new. She, you know, she's new, but I'm glad she had my back. We're used to that. Sharon, we're used to that. We've been doing this for seven years. We come across a lot of jokes. Ah. I just, I just, I just wanna, I just wanna say thank again, thank you, Tawanda, for you know hooking us up with the show and everything. So also, we found out yesterday that um, Bobby Christina passed away, and she was, um, what, what you call that? For six months, she was in a coma after being found in a bathtub, unresponsive, face down in the tub. And um, you know, I think that. For the past month, everybody has just been waiting since we found out that she was in hospice care. I do think, of, of course, it, it's a very sad situation. 
Um, I think it, it, it's a situation that could have been avoided if Bobby Christina would have let people help her, like her grandmother and the people that was really there for her. Because y'all know how I feel about Pat Houston. Pat Houston was an enabler. And we've seen that on the show with the Houstons. Like she let Bobby Christina drink. But then when the camera's around, she wanted to act like, oh, you can't drink and you shouldn't do this. And Bobby was high the whole show. It was just it was just a whole lot. And she, this young girl, she went through a lot growing up, seeing her parents do drugs. And then, you know, she doing drugs. Then she's doing it with Whitney. It was just a whole lot going on. It was a whole lot going on. And it's such it's just so sad to see her lose her life and only be here for only twenty two years. That's just that's so that's so short. That's so short. And I just really wish that she would have got the help that she needed or her family members forced her to get that help that she needed because now she is no longer here. It's just it's just sad. And you know, my heart goes out to the Houstons, the Browns, especially Miss Sissy Houston, because she has been through a whole lot these past twenty something years with her daughter, then trying to help her granddaughter. Her granddaughter don't want to have nothing to do with her. It's just, it's just, it's just sad. It's just so sad. Anything you want to say? Yeah, I want to say um, the same thing you said, but I also want to send my condolences. To Bobby Brown, because it seems yeah, like a lot Bobby of people Brown, have been yeah. forgetting about him. I mean, he was her father, and despite maybe despite his relationship with her mother, whatever that was, that was still her father, and we should not forget about him. You know, he had to bury his ex-wife. Now he has to bury his one of his children, and that's like, that's that's. I don't think any parent, you know, well, I don't. It's not. I don't think. I know no parent wants to bury their child. But for it to be so close to when he buried his ex-wife, you know, it's it's really sad and it's unfortunate. And like I said, you know, my condolences out to their family. And, you know, hopefully in these next few days and the weeks and the months ahead, you know, the media and people will give them their privacy, even though that's sort of unheard of in Hollywood. But hopefully they will give them their privacy that they deserve because this is a tough time that their family is going to have to deal with and yeah know, I think I think I think that they have right now I think they do have their respect I know that people are taking pictures and things like that but during her time of hospice she really didn't hear too much of what's going on like I've heard that there was a casket I mean or a hearse that was at the hospice but you know that's all I heard. I well, think. I actually saw the pictures, and this was last week. Mm -hmm. And they had a tent um, erected, yeah, tent put up. and the hearse backed into the tent, and the family was called, too, because they had a picture of Pat Houston, and um, there was some other family members that were there as well. But my initial reaction last week was, oh, she died because, you know, they have this tent put up, you know, this, that, and the third. I saw the pictures, all this. But then you never heard anything last week about it. You just saw the pictures, and then... Bam, yesterday you hear that she died, and I'm thinking to myself, well, did she die last week? And they ain't say nothing until today, today mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, they had all this erected, you know. You don't put up a tent and have a hearse back into a tent unless you don't want people to see who or what you're putting inside the hearse, even though we know what you're putting inside of a hearse, but unless you don't want people to see it, so, yeah. I don't know. And it's, and it's sad, and I do feel sorry for, uh... Whitney Houston's friends that's in the industry that really got to know Bobby Christina because for me for me it doesn't it doesn't hurt me it doesn't like you know how like I don't want to sound insincere it doesn't I, affect you yeah. as if it was like someone it, you knew yeah like like well, for instance like with Whitney but for the people that's in the industry like you don't have Whitney Houston in your studio nine times out of ten Bobby Christina was around um, you know, so it's it's just so. I know it's even more hurtful for them, and some of them may have, may be feeling like, damn, I should have reached out even more than what I've already tried to do. I, I'm I'm sure we're going to be hearing that a lot and seeing that a lot, and it's just it's just so it's just so sad to see this happen to her. It's, it's just it's just sad. It's sad, but I'm not I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised 
I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But it's sad. I, I don't even talk about it no more. Just, this is, it's so freaking sad. It's so sad. I got the, I got the change of time. I can't talk about it. It's sad. Um, um, yeah, I'm fucked up right now, y'all. Sorry. Mariah Carey will be receiving a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on August 5th, which is next Wednesday. And you said that, what did you say before? Um, I said I was shocked that she didn't already have one. Yeah. Because there's some celebrities who have more than one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for different. Like Diana Ross, she has one for the Supremes and then one for... Our solo effort. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really, co it's crazy to me that, and you were mentioning about how, well, maybe Mariah didn't want to pay for one, but I'm thinking the, 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 uh, Hollywood. the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the stars, I didn't even know that you had to pay to get one until after Dennis Hopper, right before he died, and Jack Nicholson paid for him to receive one before he died because he was dying of cancer and he didn't have one and so Jack Nicholson who was a friend of his paid for him to receive a star but I'm thinking like I didn't know that you had to pay for that I thought maybe you know when you reached a certain How milestone in your career you, you know they honored you with that but it's crazy because Mariah Carey has been in the industry for over 25 years and for her to just now be receiving a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame especially the way her career has, you know, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. to think that she ain't she in 2015. She's just getting her star. Like, yeah, I don't, did Whitney Houston get hers yet? Because that I'm was another sure. reason why I'm I know sure. that she didn't want to pay for one. And then I think you got to pay like ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars a year for the upkeep of your star. I think, I, don't quote me on that. You know what? I think some celebrities who don't pay for it feel as though I shouldn't have to pay for that. You mm -hmm. should. Honor me with that. Yeah. And I agree. Why should I have to pay for that? Yeah, it's like 3,000 people. It's like 3,000 stars on the walk. I'm going to ask Michelle, because we're friends with Michelle, and I'm going to ask her, did Destiny's Child have to pay for that? Because you know they have one. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to figure out why it is that you have to pay to be to be honored. Because <laughs> you're going to be on the streets forever. So? <laughs> Your dad will be paid. <laughs> well, that's why, that's all the reason why I shouldn't have to pay for that. Because it's like, you know, you would expect them to only put certain people who, you know, reach a certain athlete up there, so it's like, why should I have to pay for that? Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's sad. And, and I, I noticed that, um... No, it's not sad, it's silly. That your girl didn't even get the, uh, what is the Medal of Freedom? The new list came out, and Pay LaBelle wasn't on it again. From who? For the president, with the, um... What they do it every year. And you said they gotta be alive, to get it. That's not the Medal of Freedom, that's the Kennedy it's, Center Honors. Yeah, but didn't they already come that's, out? No, Kennedy Center Honors for 2015 is not announced until September. Oh, okay. Well, but well, what you're so talking about is totally different. Oh, okay. I was like, damn, they still ain't put your girl on there. I was like, Steven Spielberg! That's totally different. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, I messed up. But well, I'm glad we changed that subject <laughs> real fast. Because I ain't on the count to be like, right. Bitch. Why my grandma? All right. Yes. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> yes, thank you, God. <laughs> Congratulations, Brian <laughs> Carey. Wait a minute now. Y'all know my girl came back with a new video Ooh. on Friday, Janet Jackson. And she has J. Cole being featured on the song. She said, now this is the official. This is no remix. He's on the song. I guess Janet wanted to do it by herself first. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, J. Cole is on the album. But it's the same song. Just he, with him added. Yeah, he, him, him added to it. And he lifts, he elevates this fucking song. So does he go over the script? Oh, yeah. I, he does a lot. And then in the video, I was really feeling the video. And it's and it's, it's a laid back, cute video. Janet did minimal dancing. When I say minimal, I mean minimal. Not even 10 seconds worth. It was like, bitch, y'all gonna pay to see me dance. Wow. And I'm over her. A Is, that bit. How she feels? <laughs> Is that how she feels? Is that how she feels? Yes. And then, if y'all ain't watched the video I put up for y'all on Friday, I just basically went off a little bit about Ticketmaster. I hate Ticketmaster here in Philadelphia because you have to purchase it through Comcast tickets. And Comcast tickets always 
makes you sit where they want you to sit instead of letting you pick where you want to sit. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to the Live Nation site and looked at different cities, I seen like the Barclays Center in Washington, D.C. They can all click on the seat that they want. And we can't fucking do that. I don't want to sit all the way in the back at no Janet Jackson concert. I want I, If I can't get front row in the first five, I might get no tickets. I won't be buying no tickets. I remember when I first bought my, because um, you know, um, when I went to Beyonce's, the Beyonce experience, around that time when I was buying my tickets, they allowed you when you go on the websites to purchase, mm -hmm. to pick where you sit. Where you could, because they had the map and then you were able to, you saw the um, where you want available seats and you got to choose where you want to sit. And then the, when you clicked on it, it tell you how much they cost with the kids to be. And I agree with you because now it's kind of changed where they try to bring what you where you want to sit at. And I'm like, no, because like you said, there's some seats that be so far away and you'd be like, I don't want to sit right there. Because my whole thing is, if I can't, if I'm not in ear's length of you, where I'm yelling and you can hear me, I'm not going. Because I might as well keep my ass at home. You know, That's just how I feel personally. You know, other people, they don't feel that way. They're like, well, as long as I'm in here, I don't okay. care. But me, that's not me. <laughs> okay. It's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. It's tough. You know, because then, when you are so used to being so close and then you're so mm -hmm. far back and you're like, uh-uh. I don't feel right being at a Beyonce concert all the way in the back. Yeah. <laughs> like that. last time when Janet came here, no. you could buy the tickets off of her site and then you picked where you can sit. And now I'm kind of spoiled. So now it's like, right. now I can't do that? Right. Come on. But they're going to have Facebook, oh, you can click on your seat and say, yeah, this is where I'm sitting at. I guess the right would be the face. And then I looked at the little, you know, like stuff hub and shit. Well, aren't you, don't they have, don't Janet have things like for her? Like members of a website when you get the first dibs, that so no she don't have that. Mm -hmm. I was say because you know some artists have that where if you're a member of the website, you get first dibs and you get the pick. You know, yeah, they get you know, the pre-order. You can get the pre-order tickets, but the yeah. pre-order tickets is still bad because you can't even <laughs> sit where the fuck you want to sit. It's like, it's, it's like a mess. Okay. But hey, it's all right, Janet. But um, yeah, Janet, I do want you to come out with a new song by the middle of August. And, you know, get these girls talking. I know right now everybody's in reruns, but when September roll around, you need to be making the rounds. You just can't be sitting around because these young girls not going to care. Your fans care, but people that don't care, don't care. You need to make them care. So, if y'all missed that video, go watch it because I went on to a rant. Uh, so, Hulk Hogan. Let me tell you something. I tell you again. Y'all miss the good shit when me and Mikel be outside. And we be debating like we on camera and we're not. But we had a nice long conversation about Hulk Hogan. So if you missed it, if you were under a rock. Let me tell y'all, on on early Friday morning, Hulk Hogan was trending. And I mean, he trended the whole day. And the story hadn't even came out yet. And WWE was like, Hulk Hogan is fired. Um, they took him off their website. They took him out the Hall of Fame. Like, like his name is not there. Like... You don't see anything. So we were still trying to find out what happened. There was a video floating around where Hulk Hogan said nigga on it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, this is not the reason why. Because that segment happened. With it, the stuff that they were talking about was from 20 years ago. When um, Booker T called Hulk Hogan a nigga or whatever. And, you know, Hulk Hogan was saying that. Booker T called Hulk Hogan a nigga? Yeah. Oh, you know, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, because no. when you said 20 years ago, and I'm thinking like, no, I thought that video was more recent than that. Oh, yeah. Which still about something totally different. Yeah. And he was like in the interview, and he was all hyped up. He was like, Hulk Hogan, we coming for you too, nigga. And he was like, oh, shit, I done fucked up. But it was live TV, nothing they could do about it. So sometimes they like to, when Booker T do interviews, they like to talk to him about it. And he's like, kind of like, we passed that. Right. It's kind of like asking Michelle about her phone on 106 Park. Bitch, we passed that. So... Hulk Hogan just was talking about it, but he don't like, he was like, he's not, he was saying something about when people call him a nigga or, or you call me that, but why can't I say, he was saying something like to that effect, but mm -hmm. it still wasn't enough to get him fired. Right. So it was Radar Online and another website in conjunction, in the National Enquirer, in conjunction with each other, putting this story out about um, Hulk Hogan. Back like two, three years ago, Hulk Hogan had a sex tape out and Gawker.com had released the sex tape. But the tape is longer than that because it's from Hulk Hogan's house footage. Now, I don't know who gave the tape out or anything, but on the tape, Hulk Hogan was talking about his daughter, Brooke. Now, if y'all don't remember her, Hulk Hogan had a show, Hogan, know, Hogan Knows Best. And we're talking about the tall six-feet girl. Looks just like him. We're here. And he was upset about her dating this black guy. 
and what Hulk Hogan was saying was that if she's going to be dating a black guy, he needs to be eight feet tall and he needs to be making a hundred million dollars. But she, again, he didn't like the fact that she was dating him and that she was working with him for her music career. And so he kept saying like... Because um, he was black. Yeah. And then he was like, um, we're all racist to a point. And then it says fucking niggers. And then again, he was like, you know, we're all just... Ra I, I'm a little bit racist. And then he said fucking niggers again. But I want to... I want to... It's, it's sad, not sad. I want to hear the context of how he was saying it. Because you can read things and interpret it different ways. Mm -hmm. I do feel bad for Hulk Hogan because what he said was in his house. And normally what you say indoors, stay indoors and no one would never know. But now we just... In Unless this it's on camera. camera. Yes. And it's and so on release. Like, yes. And it's no longer... And they release it and put it out and then you got... You still have wrestlers defending Hulk Hogan saying, well... I've wrestled with Hulk Hogan, I've been around him, mm -hmm. I know he's not a racist or whatever. Mm -hmm. He could have been saying this, because I'm going to be honest, sometimes when we have conversations, not me and you, but when we have conversations with black people, sometimes we might say something about white people, or we might say, oh that cracker this and that cracker that. Now I don't talk like that, but mm -hmm. I do know people that do. Mm -hmm. And just imagine if you were on this platform and this video came out of you saying it. You would say, I'm not racist, but you said cracker. You was making a racial statement by saying that. So Hulk Hogan could be mad that she's dating this black guy and saying nigger, but he not be a racist. He's just saying it out of, I know it might sound crazy. Yeah. It might be saying it out of anger because she's dating this black guy. But the, but only, the, the only thing that kills Hulk Hogan is when he said, but I am racist. There you go. So you ain't got to. I'm right here. I'm okay. right here. I got okay. you. I got you. Because I know I how you, you feel about this situation yes. because we already had that conversation. Yes. And let me just say this. I want to make it clear from the conversation that you and I had off camera. Mm -hmm. Hulk, Hogan, Hulk Hogan being stripped of his Hall of Fame and stuff like that, I think that that's wrong. Because the man worked hard to get that. For him yes. to be in the Hall of Fame, he worked hard for that. And I don't think that because this video came out, that's therefore he should be stripped of that stuff. No, that's wrong. But if the WWE decides that they want to part ways with doing business with Hulk Hogan, we cannot get upset with them. Why? Because the WWE is protecting their brand. They're also protecting the people who come and support them and who watch them. Now, I know somebody made a comment outside when we were talking, oh, black people don't watch it wrestling it's yes, not true really do. black people do watch wrestling you're one of the black people that watches it there's tons of black people out there that love wrestling just like white people do so therefore we can't we can't you may be supportive of Hulk Hogan and say you know I don't think that you know that, that. but there may be somebody else who says no this is wrong and I don't support the fact you know WWE keeping him because if they do keep him then I'm not going to support wrestling because this is wrong if it's if it's good for the goose then it should be good enough for the gander and especially when he himself said out of his own mouth that he's racist. slightly racist mm -hmm. so you know I can see if he said it and then he was like you know but this but for, for, even if he didn't say he was racist Oh, the whole comment, oh, she if she's going to date a black guy, he has to be eight foot tall, basically assuming that he has to be a basketball player, he has to make this much money, he has to do, it, it's like, come on, like, like black people that's under eight foot are not worthy basically, of dating your daughter. That's what he was saying, you know, no what, black person. Yeah, yeah, no black person. So therefore, you know, <laughs> tough luck. Yeah. I think Hulk Hogan himself put his foot in his mouth. And shout out to his fellow wrestlers who are coming to his defense, but you can't come to nobody's defense when they themselves mm. call themselves a racist. Yeah. I mean, you just can't do that. Now, you can love your friend and you can support him, but you can't you can't come to his defense and say, oh, but he's not this guy when he himself said that he's this guy. You know what I mean? It's just like if you find a video of somebody molesting a child and then they come out and say, I'm not a child molester, but yet we have proof of you being a child molester. Yeah. You know, it's it's a little weird. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, Hulk Hogan, for him to be, you know, like you said, this is an old video and it came out, it, it was yeah, it was, probably, eight it, years it, ago. it was from eight years ago. But you know, you have to be mindful of some of the things that you say. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it, it will come back to bite you in the butt. 
and something like this where you are, when we're living in a world where we are upset with police officers for not killing us, but just arresting us, for stopping us, you know, we're upset at police officers for all types of things. If we're going to be upset with police officers for the things that they do and Paula Dean for the things that she mm -hmm. said, then we need to be upset with Hulk Hogan too. Yeah. Right is right. And he should have never said it. It was but, wrong. You know what? I think that in the future, I do think that Hulk Hogan should be allowed to apologize. Well, he's, oh, already, he's already released yeah. a, a, a statement apologizing. But WWE, I want y'all to, to really understand something. You have to remember that Hulk Hogan, not Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon has actually said nigger on television. And they should get rid of him. And, and listen, this, this is their statement. Yes, um, the character, Mr. McMahon, said those things. The okay, character. The character, Mr. McMahon. Because Vince McMahon, his character is Mr. McMahon. Wrestling, it, it's, you know, so powerful. But it's like he said that on TV in front of Booker T. And, you know, I guess, what, what can Booker T do? That's my boss. Not unless he wants to quit. He got to provide for his family, but it's not okay. There's been so much shit racist going on in the WWE. If you want to talk about, oh, we're here for for uh, equality for all and everything, diversity, why is there only one black WWE champion? Why is The Rock the only black man? And yes, and yes, people say he doesn't talk about him being black. I, he does talk about being black, and he also recognized his Samoan heritage. They come from a more what you call it, they have more of a stronger background than what his father brought to wrestling. So of course he would be considered a part of the Samoan dynasty. But we know he's black and it's again only one black champion. And in 60 years that you guys have been out here. And he's and, not even a wrestler anymore. And he, no, he's not a wrestler no more, but he come back and make the, the Rock makes dollars. The Rock will be wrestling at WrestleMania 32 and I will be there. If Lord willing, if I'm still here, I'm going to be in Dallas for WrestleMania 32 because I want to be a part of the new record and I want to see The Rock wrestle, his, wrestle out there. But anyway, also WWE, you got you got the, you got three black guys uh, coming out as a, a, a gospel group and everything, and you know it's just too much. And then one time y'all had Mark Henry act like he was a silver silverback gorilla, like. Let's act. Let's not act like there hasn't been no racist things in WWE. Now, all of a sudden, something came out from eight years ago. Oh, we're done. Like, bam, no. Mm -hmm. And when Hulk Hogan said he wasn't in character, <laughs> I mean, so why strike him out the Hall of Fame? All that Hulk Hogan has did for wrestling. Now you want to act like he was Chris Benoit? Well, well listen, kill his whole listen, family. That's. I think that's probably the problem too, because you said I don't even believe all this character stuff but I think that's probably the problem listen he wasn't in character he was him yeah, <laughs> so a, him yeah. he's a racist so, so we don't want to deal with him a racist yeah so don't get rid of the character Hulk Hogan I mean take him off TV for a while but don't take him off don't act like he ain't do shit for wrestling because Mr. McMahon he put y'all on the motherfucking map let's not act like that Vince Let's not do that. He wasn't like Chris Benoit, where Chris Benoit, and, and, and wrestling is part to blame for it too. Chris Benoit had a head injury, always banging his head on stuff, and he killed his whole family. He, he strangled his wife, he strangled his son, and he killed himself. Mm -hmm. But when they went to analyze his brain, mm -hmm. they said he had a brain of an 80-year-old. Mm -hmm. That his, his head was just damaged. So wrestling, y'all learn a lot from it. But I think y'all could make, instead of acting like Chris Benoit never existed, y'all can turn that negative into a positive. Y'all, it's just every, anything that Chris Benoit did in wrestling is like he never existed. If somebody beat him for the belt like Randy Orton won his first championship, you still don't never see it. All you hear is the audio. You never see the video. It's just, it's just a shame that WWE could have said, you know, we, what, this is what we've learned from this that. We we make sure that wrestlers don't wrestle with concussions, that we don't do chair shots to the head. Like they don't, you don't never see nobody get hit in the head. You don't see blood anymore. You rarely see blood. It's just it's just WWE. It's like y'all 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 done a lot of stuff too. But now that Hulk Hogan got caught, now I was like, oh my God, we don't want to have nothing to do with him. And I feel that that's wrong to strike him out of history when he's done so much for the company. But Give Hulk Hogan a couple years, he'll be okay. I say give him a couple years, he'll be okay. 
this, yeah. this man, you try. And then, bitch, when you gonna get Naomi the belt? That's a hardworking black woman, and y'all keep passing it over, passing her over for the title. Give her the fucking belt. Um, Con what's her name? Khloe Kardashian. She looks damn good on the Complex magazine. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. She looks damn good. But something she said in the article. It's, it it kind of frustrates me a little bit mm -hmm. because from what I've read, she said that her sister, yes, my sister is 17 years old. When I was 16, I was out there fucking people in their 20s too. Yes, that's fine. But you as a 30-year-old woman saying that your sister is following the footsteps you made, you should be the one saying, hold up, Kylie. And somehow now, implying that yeah, it's okay. Yeah, like she's saying that it's okay. Right. Tell me, but my sister is not like the average 17 year old because my sister she's she's not going on primes and having sleepovers she's going into business meetings and things like that you are making it okay that your sister is out here fucking a man that's 25 years old it is not okay and again you at 30 should be telling your sister like listen you know I know I've done the same thing but now you're in the public eye and it's not a good look not only is it not a good look for our family it's not a good look for you mm -hmm. and it's not a good look for the person that's having sex with you mm -hmm. and dating you because you're not even an adult you're not even a full adult your mindset is not there you might think that you're there but you are not there that's just like me letting my niece and they, they 11 now that's just like in five years I say oh it's okay for y'all to date a 23 year old man fuck no it ain't okay it will never be okay You'll never be okay. How do you feel? I'm the same you, way. Like, so it's just... It depends on what's better. But, Chloe, your body looks amazing. It looks, ve it, it looks very good. And, and I don't know how... Do. I don't know how... Tiger isn't in jail. I don't know. Like, what's the laws in California? I don't know how he's not in jail. I don't know how this is... Not an omission on Chloe's part that her sister is fucking with this 25 year old man. Like, I just don't know how this is even acceptable. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know, because if this was anybody else, they would be in jail. Like, I'm not understanding. Yeah, they that. would be in jail. I'm not understanding how this is not headline news that Kylie Jenner, the sister of Kim Kardashian, since she's the big star in the family, how the sister of Kim Kardashian is fucking a 25 year old man <laughs> when she's 17, and this man's not in jail. <laughs> no, I'm not being funny. I'm being serious. No, you know I'm what I mean? Like, how is this not news? Is they, that what they do in maybe, California? I don't. I don't know California's. I don't know their laws. But I did find out about our laws because I've been saying on this show for years that at 16, yes, at 16 you can date who you want to. You can have sex with them. But there is a law saying that if you're having sex with anybody that's over the age of 18, they can be arrested because that 18 year old law. I mean, the, 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 the law with the 18-year-old, it supersedes the law that gives you the age of consent at 16. Right. Well, that's so, what we would yeah. well, But I didn't know until I, I, I really looked in it. And I was like, not, you know, I, I did. He was right. And I was like, no, bitch. The age of consent. I was right about the age of consent. I was right about the age of consent. But what I wasn't right is that we do have a law and you can be arrested. And I've also looked, because I, I looked at... I was saying that, right? Yeah, you was right. And I was looking, you know, I like to look to see who's in the neighborhood that, oh my God, I'll tell you something. baby. <laughs> and then I wanted to find out, well, what's a 3121 that's having sex with a minor? Like, it's, or, or sexual deviant. Like, they be doing a lot of creepy shit. Oh my God, a lot of them. It's, it's sad, that's sad. I'm off, off, off of yeah. them. I don't talk about them anymore. Yeah, I know what's that topic. I know you seen Basketball Vibes. No, I didn't. I'm oh, I did a video. Back. If y'all missed it, watch it. But listen, I had a chance to re-watch it again. Drea kept it cute about what she told Jackie about the FUPA situation. And I ain't never heard no goddamn FUPA. And you know what that means? Mm -hmm. Fat upper pussy area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard of that. Now... Some women have it, but, you know, I don't think it was enough to say that about Brooke. I'm not Brooke, Megan. Because there are some big girls out there that's, where it just covers it. And you, you I'm not going there because that's me. But, yeah, you know, but she kept it cute because Jackie twisted it. 
she twisted what Dre has said while she was talking to Megan and saying, um, yeah, um, you might want to talk to uh, Dre about what she said. And then she going to tell uh, Drea, um, yeah, she was asking me what were the critiques that you had for her. Now, bitch, she never said anything about it because Jackie's the one that brought it up to Megan. <laughs> like, that bitch. And Dre was like, I'm not fucking stupid. I know her very well. Listen, somebody posted, and I didn't see the show, but somebody posted, and, I, and they said, Jackie reminds me of a couple of people. Okay. You just can't say that. But I got my life when she said Jackie reminds me of a couple of people. <laughs> she does. But see, I don't fuck with those kinds of people. <laughs> because if I'm going to be friends with you and you ain't going to be... First of all, what I tell you, I tell you in confidence. Mm -hmm. I, I don't expect for you to go out and tell that person what I said mm -hmm. about them. <laughs> Jackie is the kind of person where if you want to talk about somebody and you want them to know what you said, <laughs> tell Jackie will be the one that say it. <laughs> that she wasn't trying to be mean or anything, but she said that you always think you better than everybody, <laughs> bitch. And you just said to such and such. Oh, Jackie will twist it around, bitch. And then she's gonna be like, oh, well, oh, so and so's coming to the party, and we did talk about you and what we did say. About you. <laughs> Jackie is that bitch. Uh -huh. And but she ain't got no friends yeah. her age. And she cries on you. <laughs> she wanna cry about fucking tell my, my mom. She loved you, Malaysia. She thought she liked you better than everybody. Oh, Jackie, please. Oh, please. Please, did Malaysia don't hear that. <laughs> no. But because she was talking about her mom and she checking, she's like, I got a little soft spot. Everybody got a soft spot, but that soft spot is going to be a hard spot that just is going to be a part where she daggers the mm -hmm. shit out of it. Because that's her intention. Y'all remember that time she tried to be friends? She's like, I'm going to be friends with her and then I'm going to get that bitch. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of bitch Jackie is, and y'all don't want to fuck with that. But I'm glad Shawnee. Shawnee will be back next week with Tammy, and I seen that Evelyn was going to be a part of the episode, but Evelyn is not a part of the cast. Evelyn has her own show, and I seen the second episode. I haven't watched the third one yet. Second episode is is leaning towards. I don't think I'm gonna be watching this show for much longer. <laughs> but Shanice and Flex, y'all on point. I love that show. But yeah, so what else is on these cards? Well, go ahead. I want to see what you have before we. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Bill, I had the Bill Cosby thing. I just, what's new with that? I, I'm just trying to find. Like we already heard what y'all had to say. Now it was 35 women on the cover of the New York Magazine, uh, NYMag.com, and somebody shut their website down today. But anyway, it's 35 plus a chair, and they're all telling their little stories about what happened. But it's like we've already heard Gloria Allred, and we've already heard everybody else talking about it. Like, what else can you do? The man's rep reputation is already tarnished. After three weeks, three weeks ago, this shit came out. It's over with now. Bill Cosby is somewhere with Camille, just laying low, as I would be doing if I did something like that and it came out. I wouldn't have nothing to say. I wouldn't be doing anything. I'd just be living my life until it's time for me to die. That's all I can do. It's not a lips chat, bitch, because you no. keep... That's the I'm not looking at your lips, so I don't know. <laughs> they don't concern me. But next, what was the last topic? That was it. Okay, well, it. Sandra Bland. We didn't... Oh, my God! Let me speak about that. Can you start? Because I'm really... My throat is parched. Well, um... Sandra Bland was laid to rest uh, over the weekend. The family had a funeral for her. Um, an autopsy came out. Now, let me be clear. The family has done their own autopsy as well, right? Mm -hmm. got, has that come out yet? I'm not sure. I'm not, for sh I'm not sure either. But what I do know is the official, you know, the autopsy from the, that was taken down in Texas revealed that she indeed um, committed suicide. Um, they came back and said that there was no bruises on her body to indicate that, you know, she was struggling with anybody, you know, that it was indeed a suicide. Um, there are a lot of people who still believe that that's not true, that, you know, that she was murdered. I'm waiting to figure out what it is that the, um, the family's autopsy has to say. Because, naturally, um, I had this conversation um, with my pastor. This was one of the conversations we had yesterday at his home. And we were talking about Sandra Bland. And um, what he was saying to me was he definitely feels as though if, um, if 
the autopsy comes back from the family saying that she committed suicide, then that is something that we all need to accept, that she committed suicide. But what he was saying is, that does not excuse the police department from being liable Amen. in some sort. And I agree. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that police officers murdered Sandra Bland as far as killing her? No, I don't believe that. And I made that very clear over the weekend. I don't believe that. But what I do believe, as my pastor said, is that they are somewhat liable in what happened to her. For her to be in jail for three days over a traffic stop is ridiculous. Yes, that is so ridiculous. No one should be in jail for three days over a traffic stop, especially for not turning on your turn signal. But see, she wasn't in jail for the, the traffic stop. No, she wasn't in jail for that, but that's what she was initially pulled over for. Mm -hmm. She was in jail because she somehow was being defiant, wasn't complying to officers' law, officers, the officer's command by putting out her cigarette and getting out of the car, whatever the case may be, even though she did get out of the car, and I'm sure somehow the cigarette was put out. But for some strange reason, you know, he decided to exert his power and make her and tell her that she needs to put out her cigarette. But I think that this particular case, police departments, not just in Texas, but all around this country, they need to do a better job of training their officers on how to handle situations like this. Because the traffic stop, yes, as we were watching earlier with Don Lemon and Sonny Hostins and Mark um, Hill and the other um, the police officer, traffic stops can be very, very annoying. You don't drive. I do. And I've been pulled over a few times. And yes, I, I saw the video of Sandra Bland when she was pulled over and her saying the same attitude that she had when that cop stopped her is the same attitude that I have at times too. You are stopping me for what? Are you serious? You get upset. You're you're angry. Like you're not. Oh, okay. No, you're not like that. You are upset because this is ridiculous. I can't believe this is happening. I was saying this to say what? What was I saying? You were saying that everyone gets upset. Yeah, everyone gets upset. But but police the police department has to learn how to train their officers how to deal with certain situations so they don't escalate. The situation. They have to be there because they are the professionals, like Sonny Hassan says, and they, they have to learn how to de escalate any situation that seems that comes about. That him asking her to put out her cigarette while she's in her car, I'm glad. I can't remember. I think it was Sonny Hassan who said she looked up and she found out there is no law that says that a person is not allowed to smoke in their a, a cigarette in their car. Just like there's no law that says that. You can give me a ticket or write me a ticket because I'm smoking a cigarette in my car. She's smoking a cigarette in her car. The fact that he asked her to put that cigarette cigarette out just shows that he was trying to exert his power. And that is wrong. He should have just wrote, wrote her that warning like he did because I don't even think he was writing her a ticket. I think he was giving her a warning. Mm -hmm. And then send her on her way. So yes, the police department or this particular police officer is partly liable for her death. Do I think that they are solely liable? No, I do not believe that. But I do think that they are liable in, in, in keeping this woman in jail for three days. Why would you keep somebody in three days because they didn't in jail for three days because they didn't put out the cigarette? It makes no sense to me. And again, uh, what I was saying, um, what I was saying this weekend, we found out. Because you mentioned it in our last video about the whole depression situation. And then I found out a little bit more that she had actually was not only dealing with depression, that she was built, dealing with post-traumatic stress as well. Black people, we have to stop pretending like this is not an issue. We have to stop pretending like this is not an issue. This is a real serious issue in our community. And no, Sandra Bland going to Texas and starting a new job and being excited about this new job. No, of course that's not, you would never think that somebody in that situation would commit suicide. But you never know, that whole her getting pulled over and then being in jail for three days, you don't know what could have triggered that depression inside her head to where as though it made her be even more angry at the situation. Because like this autopsy came back and said, somebody said to me today, 
people are, you know what I don't like? Is that now that we have this autopsy out here, people are now digging up all the, well, this particular person is married to this person, and that's now, they're working with the police department. The, the, the police department has nothing to do with the autopsy, okay? They have nothing to do with that. The medical examiner does not work for the, the police department. They don't have any reason to lie and, and, and for them. Because if that was the case, I'm sure that medical examiner in Baltimore in the Freddie Gray case would have came back and said, no, the police department had nothing to do with his death. But they came back and said, yes, not only was it murder, but the police department had something to do with it because it was blunt force, trauma force to this man. Stop thinking that because something does not is the, the response that you're getting is not the response that you want that somehow, oh, everybody's in cahoots with each other. You know what I mean? Because if Sandra Bland's family autopsy comes back and says that she committed suicide, then what's going to be the argument? Do y'all going to say that her family that she hired, the, the, all, that medical examiner is working for the Texas police too? Like, I'm just, it, it, it bothers me that people, they are so quick to speak. They're so quick to speak. That's why when the Sandra Bland case first came about, I said nothing. And the first time I said something about it was when we recorded last week. I said nothing because I did not know everything that happened. And that's what we have to do. We have to be, we can't be so quick to speak and say, oh, this is what happened. This is how it happened. And I know this because they don't do this. I've never been to jail before. Never been put in a jail cell. So I don't know what kind of trash bags they have in their trash cans. So when people were asking me, well, why would they have, I said, I don't know. I ain't never been to jail before. So how the hell am I supposed to know what they have in their trash cans? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know that. And half the people who were saying some of the stuff, they don't know it either because they weren't in jail either. But you have to be patient, okay? You have to be patient. What we need to do is try to figure out how it is that we can get these police officers to stop exerting their power when they come across people that they feel as though, oh, well, you're not listening to me, so therefore I'm just going to arrest you. No, that's not cool and it's not right. Had this guy not been an asshole in asking her to put out that cigarette, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. And it wasn't even just that. It was also the fact that he asked her, um, you seem agitated that I poured you over and stuff like that. And then he, um, as he hand, hands her the paper that she's going to sign, he then asked her to put out the cigarette. And she said no. And mm -hmm. then he was like, you know what, that's it. I'm arresting you. So yeah, he escalated that. Now, I can understand why people are so upset about what this autopsy came back out because a lot of these police departments, they do lie and they do cover up for each other. And another thing, you know, I hate to say this, but we watch shows like How to Way to Get, a Get Away with Murder. We watch shows like Scandals that shows you how people do things and people manipulate people to say that this is not it and such and such and such and such. So that's why a lot of people are upset and a lot of people are angry. And I do think that we should wait until the independent autopsy comes out that the family had done before everybody goes crazy. Right now, I do feel like why hasn't anything been done to this police officer who stopped her? It's like we're all worried about what this autopsy is saying, but no one is penalizing this officer. No, Everyone said, yeah, he triggered all of this, but... There's no punishment, and I'm gonna well, know from what I'm, from, from what I saw last week is that he was suspended. I even mentioned that in the video. That like he's he was, probably suspended with pay. Yeah, until they find out. I mean, you can't expect you can't expect them to actually fire him, especially if you can't expect him to be fired before an autopsy or anything comes about. You know what I mean? For instance, nobody's saying that this cop actually murdered her. What people are upset is how she was arrested by this police officer. You see what I'm saying? So then, if they fire him, why is he being fired? Because he arrested her because she wouldn't put out her cigarette? No, because of what? Because in part, that police department does have something to do with her death as well. And they probably going to look at him as he's the main part of it. Because when he stopped her at the car and everything, when he came back the second time and instigated that incident that happened, he got. He went back to the car to talk to his supervisor to see what could he charge her with. Mm -hmm. So he was already looking for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even because she put the cigarette out that she got arrested. It's because he put in the, the, port, the report that she assaulted him when he reached into mm -hmm. the car to pull her out. That she kicked him. So, you know, they were saying mm -hmm. that she was like resisting arrest. So basically what you're saying is he lied. Yeah. So then, therefore, okay, but what I, what I, 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 I see what you're saying, but what I was saying earlier is 
we we have to wait. This is why I said you have to you have to wait. You know what I mean? You have to wait before we start saying this person should be fired and that person should be fired. Let's first find out everything that's going on before we start saying who should be fired. You know what I mean? Because him pulling her over does not mean that she he should be fired. No. That does not mean he should be fired. No, because if that's the case, then everybody who gets pulled over should have the police officer who pulled them over fired. And I would have a ton of them fired, okay? That does not mean that. I understand what you... It's true. I get pulled over a lot. I do. But what I'm saying is... But you know what's so funny? I get pulled over a lot. Pull over a lot, but I am one of those people that can honestly say that in the case of me getting pulled over a lot, 90% of the time I'm getting pulled over by a white police officer. Mm -hmm. But I can honestly sit here and say that half the time that I get pulled over, I, I, I leave the scene without a ticket. One case, and I think I said this in our show a few times before, but one case, I got pulled over one night for running a red light. I was wrong, and I knew I was wrong. This cop came out of nowhere. He was sitting in the ducky spot. He came out of nowhere and he pulled me over. He pulled me over and he came to my car. And it was just him. He came to my car and he said, the first thing he said to me was, if you tell me what you did wrong, I'll let you go. And I told him what I did wrong. And you know what he said to me? Don't do it again. Have a nice night. And this was an old white police officer. 90% of the times I come across these. So I... Somebody like me who comes across police officers, I have a hard time with just saying, this person's a racist, this person's a racist, especially when you have not encountered that yet. You know what I mean? And I'm sure there's a lot of people who haven't encountered. For those of you that have, I'm sorry that you've had to go through that. I really am. But I cannot go and start yelling racist if that's never happened to me. You see what I'm saying? It's never happened to me. And like I said, we already know around this country, half the police officers in this country are white. You got some places that don't even have not one black officer on their force. And we all know that Philadelphia police officers are ruthless, okay? They are ruthless. But what I'm saying is I come across a lot of white police officers that I don't have that same experience that a Freddie Gray had or Sandra Bland had or Michael Brown had. I don't have those type of experiences with them. So no, I don't understand that racial aspect. That's why I always say it's good to just sit back and wait to see what it is that what it is that's going on before we start yelling, oh, you did this, you did that, especially if you don't know the full extent. I think what people were upset about was because this woman died in the jail cell and they said, well, she she was wrongfully arrested. But then people didn't start thinking about the fact that, yeah, this one, and you know, somebody said to me, well, what does her having depression have to do with anything? That has a lot to do with it. Somebody Anybody who, actually asked Somebody that? asked me that on Instagram. What does that have to do with anything? When somebody is suffering from depression and they admit out of their own mouths that they, they've been suffering from it, that has a lot to do with it. It has a lot to do with it. And don't just, don't just, don't just sweep that. That's the problem that we have. You sweep it under the rug. Who's to say if that depression did not just come back and kick in and she could have been upset at the fact that she's in jail for so long. Now I'm getting mad. Now I'm getting angry. And therefore, you know what? That's it. Stop thinking that depression is not a serious thing. It is a serious thing. A very serious thing. And people should stop overlooking it. And yes, I was heated when I got that question. Well, what does depression have to do with anything? What does her having depression have to do with anything? And I'm like, are you serious? That has a lot to do with anything. Because I guarantee you, if this was to go to trial, they would bring that up. Mm -hmm. That this woman would suffer from that. That would be the defense's case. Right, that would be the defense's case. Because this woman, no, it, no, no. And I said that, Kevin. I said that, oh, no, because that's not, the, and I'm like, And you wonder why I don't go back and forth with people. Oh. You wonder why. But I'm like, you, you. I, I encourage y'all to watch the interview we did with Jennifer Lewis. It's from, like, September 2012. Ooh. And she talked about depression, bipolar. Mm. She talked about all of that and how black people don't ever want to go mm. to the doctors and mm -hmm. be diagnosed because if you look at it as a bad thing, go back and watch mm. that interview. It is so good. Ooh, and you just struck put that, a nerve. I said she did. You struck a nerve. You know why? Because I never even thought about it. Jennifer Lewis hit some good points in our mm -hmm. conversation that we had with her about depression. This is why I say you cannot overlook certain situations in, in people's lives. 
that depression could have easily kicked in with Sandra Bland. Look at Jennifer Lewis, a very successful Hollywood actress. And she admitted that even today, she still goes through that bout with depression and her bipolar. So don't just overlook it because, oh, because this woman was going on her way to a new job that somehow she wasn't depressed. Are you kidding me? She was in jail for three days for what she felt was a wrongful arrest. That depression could have easily kicked in on her. You know what I mean? And then my thing is, when the family does, if they're, when their independent autopsy comes back, and that autopsy, like I said earlier, comes back and says that she did commit suicide, then what? Then what are people going to say? Are they then going to say, yes, depression is a real thing? Or are they going to continue to say, oh, no, I don't believe it? They're probably going to fight for the officers to be fired. Well, I, but I'm not, I don't have nothing to do with that part. What I'm saying is the autopsy about her committing suicide. Because once we fit, find, once the, the, the independent autopsy comes back and they say if she did or she didn't commit suicide, if it does say that she committed suicide, that's when people should really open their eyes and say, you know what, this is a serious issue. This is a very serious issue. And I posted something on Instagram the other day. Homosexuality and depression in the black community is something that we don't yeah, is, like yeah. to talk about. We just don't like to talk about it. We don't like to talk about it. And when it comes about, we do what that person said to me on Instagram. Well, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? That's what she said. What does that have to do with anything? On a, on a lighter note. You know what I mean? Can you imagine if somebody... Can, listen, I am over. Can you imagine if somebody would have said that to Andrea Yates' husband back in 2001 when he came home and found his wife had murdered all five of their children in the bathtub? Oh, what does depression have to do with anything? This woman gave birth to five beautiful children, all, all of them ranging in different ages, and postpartum um, depression is a serious thing. And she snapped one day and drowned all five of her kids in the bathtub. Can you imagine if somebody would have pulled her husband to the side and he said, well, you know, she was depressed, but what does depression have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with stuff. Like, come on. That's why it really irritated me when that person said that to me. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are not talking about the Khalid Browder situation, too. That was, um, he was 16 when he was sent to jail for being accused of stealing something. And they sent him to Rikers Island. And he was not only beat by his inmates, he was also beat by the police guards and everything. And, what, and then he was in, in, sol in solitary confinement. And he was depressed in there, and he only survived, I think it was a year or two out of jail, and he hung himself a couple months ago. And a lot of people are still not discussing it. Depression is real. Even though he tried to go to school, he just that felt depression like he came was different. over him. Yes. He, was just, he felt different. He tried to kill himself before, and this time he really went through it. And it doesn't matter how good you think our person is doing when right. their mind tells you to right. go ahead they're going to do it when they're ready to check out they are ready to check out now let me ask you this because I don't know if this is true I saw that she tried Sandra Bland tried to commit suicide last year is that true? I'm not sure if it was last year but she did try, try to, to commit, commit suicide, suicide. I think once it was, before yeah I think it was yeah I know I know that she did say yes but I know that she also lost the child. So I don't know if she tried to kill herself because she had a miscarriage, no, miscarriage or right. not. But she did try to commit suicide once yes. before. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in the report, she went because I looked at the reports that she filled out, and they did ask her, um, have you thought about suicide now? She said no. And um, do you want to kill yourself today? No. Mm -hmm. So it, When they arrested her. Yeah. Right, right. But that was three days that earlier. Was yeah. You know what I mean? No telling what in her mind. And it's so sad. Because I guarantee you, I'm almost certain that if this cop, if somebody would have told this cop, let her go because she's going to commit suicide on Monday, he probably said, look, miss, go about your damn day. You know what I mean? It, nobody wants anybody to die like that. Nobody wants that. But it's a shame because those cops had no clue on her mental state. Like you said, she filled out a report. They didn't know that she was mental. They didn't know that she had depression issues. They didn't know this woman tried to commit suicide a few years ago. I'm almost certain that he would say, you know what? Just go about your day, miss. I don't, I don't even want to deal with that. Just go about your day. You know what I mean? It's sad. And again... People have to stop acting like depression is something that just is non-existent in situations like this. Especially when you have a woman who has admitted out of her own mouth that she's tried to commit suicide in the past. That she's been battling with depression. That she's been battling with post-traumatic stress. Those are real things. That is something serious. That is something serious. 
Those type of issues that Sandra Bland was dealing with are types of issues that people usually say, you got to take, let me watch your child. Because I don't know what's going to happen if you up and get uh, angry. I don't know what you may do to your child. Now, now, I'm not saying that they will hurt their child, but you never know because what happens, we've, we've seen it a lot where parents, where mothers, they get so stressed out, they're dealing with depression, and before you know it, they didn't kill their child. And then what happens? Oh, the family knew that the, the mother had depression, but nobody wanted to step in to help the child. You know what I mean? Like, we have to stop acting like stuff like this is not real. And again, I'm not saying that the police department it, the police department is not at fault for anything. They should be liable for something. But to simply say that the police department was the ones that actually hung this woman, like, come on. Come on. And then I asked, I, asked, I said, well, what do you think? I asked one of the people, I said, what do you think the motive would be for them to kill this um, woman? Oh, motive? Um, they don't need a motive to kill her. And I'm thinking, like, well, why what, you know, why would they kill her? Like, what exactly do you think would be their reasoning for actually wanting to actually kill this woman? Oh, well, there is no They don't have to have a reason to kill her. And I'm thinking, like, but, you know, I'm sure something like this would come about if they had a trial. Like, what would be the motive to kill her after three days of having her in there? You know, like, what's, I'm not understanding. You know, I ask these questions because I'll try to get a, a clear view on how people are thinking because if we all thought the same this world would be a fucked up place if everybody agreed on every single thing it would be a fucked up place and i'm not saying that the way i think is right but what i'm what i am saying is you can't expect me to agree with you just because 10 million and all two million two ten million of y'all are saying the same thing that's just not how i how i roll yeah if they since they had video we need to see video of her in jail how many times she come out i want to see all of that that's why i said last week when we were talking about the video of somebody actually discovering her body and then running i want to see the whole video too when she went inside this jail did they show anybody going there in the cell with her like i want to see all and of how that. long were they in there? and how long were they in there you know what i mean like i want to see all of that yep this is I'm pretty sure by Thursday before we do another video or something else. I hope so. Maybe. Release. I hope that family's independent autopsy comes out. Mm -hmm. And on a lighter note, y'all, I told y'all that I was going to be watching Power. I made it all the way up to the sixth episode of the first season. Mm. And I'm enjoying the show. I'm really enjoying it. And Power is one of those shows where you have to pay attention to everything. Everything. Every fucking thing, bitch. I'm sitting here. Wait you get to season two. And I, I rewound it a couple times. Because mm -hmm. I had to make sure that, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, this is yeah. what happened. And then, and to turn back around, I, I can hear. Then these bitches start speaking in Spanish. And I'm like, damn, I got to look at the fucking subtitle. See, I'm over that part right there. Because I hate reading subtitles. No, it's not, but, a, it's not a subtitle show, though. I know, but, you know, the, the, all that fucking Spanish, the Spanish that they be speaking. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it is good. And I'm already... See, I got into it with somebody on Instagram today. Because, you know, when you say, like, no spoilers, I'm just thinking that somewhere down the line, this girl's going to get pregnant. That's what I'm thinking. She's going to get pregnant. Which one? Uh, uh, Angela Valdez. Yeah, Angela. Oh. Angie. So, she's going to say, I'm on season two, episode seven, and no, she's not pregnant. <laughs> I was like, bitch, can you read? Can you? I, well, I'm a long-time fan of this show. You should. Well, did you read? Can you read? I said, no spoilers. Tell her, oh, it's too early for this. Yeah, you damn right it's too early for this. You have a good day. Like, damn, you see me put the whole thing, but you missed the no spoilers power TV. You missed that part. You have a good day. It is too early. You have a good day. <laughs> she fucking tried it. Everybody else like, yes, it's a mess. She is down over everything. I'm team Tosh. I'm on season two, episode seven, and no, she is not pregnant. What? I gotta call my boss. <laughs> when I go to work tomorrow, I have to apologize to my boss. This has nothing to do with what you just said. But it just reminded me, because this morning, because I was off today, I didn't wake up until two o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, I slept my ass off. That's because we went to Ocean City on Saturday with the church. We got home. I didn't get in the house until like around 11 at night. I had to wake up. 11, 8.30 in the morning, I was exhausted from the beach and the heat, and I didn't get to take a nap yesterday after church, so, you know, today, I just slept, but I saw when I woke up that I had missed calls from my boss, so, I, when I called him back, he answered, he was like, no, I just figured, um, 
I was looking for you this morning. He was like, I figured you was on vacation at 7.30. So I was like, oh, yeah, you know, this, that. And I was like, oh, okay, because I'm still in bed. Mm -hmm. So I can hear, you know how when you hang it up, but you hear somebody saying something and you feel bad that you hung up? And he was like, so how's everything going? <laughs> <laughs> Click. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Don't ask me how to I didn't mean to hang up. Yeah, but at the same I'm, I'm time, why are you trying to hold the conversation? I'm gonna bed. I guess he probably figured it's two something in the afternoon, you'd be wide awake. No. <laughs> why are you trying to ask me how's everything going? Because I remember distinctly last week when one of my coworkers called, called her, I heard him yell out on the phone, I'm on vacation. Woo! <laughs> That's what I should have said to him. I'm on vacation, don't ask me how's everything going. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah. Well, well listen, y'all. Thank y'all for watching today's new video. Please make sure if you did not share, share this on Facebook, Twitter. Leave y'all comments down below. I'll be replying back and forth. I put up two extra videos. If you didn't watch them, hell, after you watch this, go back and watch those. And enjoy y'all week. And we will see y'all on Friday. Peace. Yep. Oh, no, oh, no, wait, no. Please. Did you watch Where We're Pines? No, don't tell me. Ah! Don't tell me because I'm I hear so, so many people mad. talking about Kevin, I'm moving real slow. Don't tell me. I can't even tell you which episode. You know which episode I'm on? When he just don't don't say nothing smart. Well, my don't say nothing smart. I'm on an episode when he discovered when he finds the man who created Wayne Pine. Yeah, you're way behind, <laughs> David fucking Pilcher, bitch ass. Yes. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But I don't like. I didn't like him. Well, I'm past the episode, right? And it's so such a shame that. Don't you say you no, fuck, no you fucking spoiler, bitch. I ain't finished the like, thing. Oh, okay. And you just snapped at that girl for the year. Bitch, I was over it. But yeah, I just no. thought I was onto something. But yeah, let me tell y'all, that drug game is something. See, like it's something serious on this show, and I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so I'm gonna be catching up, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll probably see, by. Yeah. By Thursday, I should be finished. What's the use of? Oh, bitch. Finish, finish, finish. <laughs> because, because on February we're no, 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 no. I told, I really was fucked up for like my cow came to my house. I was halfway crying, bitch, and I forgot. That Somebody he, said something about them crying too on Instagram when we were. Crying. I forgot that he was even coming to yeah. my house to get some fucking paper, but it was just not money, but paper. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just go. Look, we'll see y'all on Friday. Watch Wayward Pines. Y'all can catch up. Since y'all forced me to watch Power, I'm forcing y'all to watch Wayward Pines. Because that was my motherfucking show. And it's a good show. And it's a, it's a shame. Listen, this is what I've been doing.